Good evening. It's good to see everybody here. We're going to sing, we're going to plan to sing number 18, Oh How I Love Jesus. Let's stand as we sing this together. If you're using your hymnal, number 18. There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its word. It sounds like music in my ear, let's be the snake. Please be seated. Well, take your prayer list if you would. We have a couple of, of items to um, highlight and an item to update. You'll notice in your prayer list, um, it's, it's been like two weeks because of family camp. We didn't print one, but uh, there's been quite a bit of updating. I think we still missed one. I had it in my office, didn't get it over here. But um, first, let me welcome Jennifer Gruz Bobbin tonight. Thank you for joining us. So good to have you here. Yes, up from the Bay Area, where it's cool. The Bay Breeze. So Claude Busby, I know would appreciate your continued prayer, and then. Um, Jim Elstead's cousin, Rory, was just charged last Saturday and is resting at home now, waiting for test results. Sarah Burley's father, recovering well from his skin cancer surgery, and they were able to re remove all the cancer, so that's, that's good. All of these are important. Please work through all of those. Um, since we printed this, uh, we had an update on Verity. read it as it was posted there. We're praising God for a good week uh, for Verity so far. She's even been caught almost smiling. Mom has brought out the keyboard to play for Verity in her cheerful awake times. It's exciting to feel like they are close to deciding to take out her chest tubes because they are still having no output. By that you mean no drainage. Please keep praying that goes well. She continues good growth. With regard to her body, veins, and arteries, her heart is able to function well even as we ask it to manage the work of digestion. Was the heart better than they thought? But, yeah, yeah. So that's, I would guess that's from Ebony. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so, Andrea was in touch with Rebecca Cook, and this is the latest from this morning on Nancy Hurst, Matt's mother. So I'll let you read through that. 
end it. Um, let's see if there's an update from Terrell's Relations Board somewhere. <laughs> we, we know. I'm just not sure what I'm supposed to say here. So, I don't know. Okay to read it as it is. So summer camps went, went well, details about that are there. Some real spiritual enthusiasm is encouraging. And uh, as I'm remembering an earlier write-up, um, Janice was commenting on how much she appreciated her husband's faith in all of this. Boy, that, that where they are certainly. So many requests here continue to play, pray for Larry Turner and others right through here that have had surgeries, good to see Sam Hill back. Keep praying for uh, her sister as well and saved, recently had a stroke. Um, Heather, Dina, others with uh, recovering from surgery. The one I, I didn't get on here was uh, Jerry Lowry's brother, Ken, had his thymus gland removed uh, some time back, but now some of the same s effects when it was there, he's experiencing, which is really, really a strange, I think. Uh, nobody seems to know what that's all about, but uh, Jerry believes his brother saved and has done some preaching now to churches. So um, as we break up into our prayer groups a little later, keep those things in mind, if you would. Let's begin this service with prayer. Lord, we thank you that as we come tonight, we can again just readily acknowledge our every moment need of your spirit freely working within us. And Lord, as um, uh, you intercede, For believers, and and Lord, as we catch that sense of concern and compassion and burden for those about us, whether it's the greatest need of all to be saved, or whether it's a, a physical or a financial or an interpersonal uh, or a familial uh, weight, Lord, you're the God who will carry us and the weights, and yet. Um, Lord, you just call us to look to you every moment of every day. Thank you for helping these with recent surgeries. Thank you for this uh, bright spot and Verity's progress. And we do pray that you would be with her. And Lord, uh, each of these matters before us. Thank you that you care and you help us. Be with our service tonight. Be with us as we sing, as we look into your word. In Jesus' name. sing together it's just like his great love in your hymnal it's number 137 a friend I have called Jesus whose love
this evening. Again, thank you for your help with the Westgate Christian School Scholarship Fund. While Pastor Macon was out on vacation this week, I had a chance to fill in and do one of the Christian School family interviews, and um, looks like we'll be enrolling another first grader, and so um, grateful for the help with um, the various needs of um, families who truly need help. And then thank you for um, all of those who helped with the um, Celebration Fellowship for Titus and Jennifer, and they are headed east. And uh, so um, this Friday evening, college and career, back to school, barbecue and volleyball, Friday evening here at the church, 5.30, sign up, sign up, sign up. Get three thumbs up out of him. Okay, so that'll be good. Teen Leadership um, Coast event coming up on Thursday. That's a week from tomorrow, August 18. And then just around the corner, and um, we're going to hear again from our tournament director on Sunday. But one little detail. There are some invitations at the Welcome Center. How many of you know what this funny little diagram in the lower right is? How many have no idea? How many think you know, but you might be wrong? I thought I knew. I was kind of wrong. This little QR code, I understand, I haven't tested it yet. When you take your phone and you photograph it, somehow it then pulls up this map of how to get to the golf course, right? That's what I missed, yeah, okay. The website, yeah. And um, so, um, this, the, the way you sign up though is at the, uh, 
at the sign up here at the Welcome Center. And if you're bringing groups, sign up for them, but then if you'd be responsible for your group and making sure all the registration is taken care of. So if you have questions tonight, you can see Brother Olson, I'm sure. Keep all that in mind. That'll come up quickly. Mark Schrock, Mike Schrock is scheduled to be with us on uh, that weekend. So then, uh, that weekend also is the Spiritual Emphasis Retreat, Monday through Wednesday for grades 7 through 12. Uh, we don't have um, information at the Welcome Center on that yet, but that will be coming. Before we sing again, we are highlighting in our prayer list two missionaries our own Cook family uh, headed to the Down Under. And um, so I'll just read a, a, a line or two. Prayer requests final fixes for our fifth wheel trailer and decisions about that. I'm not sure they know exactly how that's going to all go yet. But. Um, and then, and then secondly, pray about their visa. And then they have about 10 months of meetings scheduled, at which time they're trusting to have full support, at which time they're trusting to have their visa, at which time they're trusting to head for Australia. So um, much to pray about there. One other thing to add to your prayer list, if you would. We had an odd thing happen with regard to our Eibach piano. There was a little clip of some kind. I don't know if it was a tie clip. I don't know if it was a, um, what kind of a clip it was. And I don't need anybody to tell me, but um, it, it fell down in there. And so far it's not, um, well, if you hear a strange note, I guess we could blame it on the clip, but I don't think it's affecting anything. Well, I, I've called, we have a very good piano tuner. In fact, when we bought this Ibeck, Ibeck back 15, 15 years ago, um, we called him about it. You've heard the story. How many have not heard the story? Three, that's enough. Okay, so, uh, so, so we called him. We said, what about this? He said, look at the serial number. If it's made in such and such a country, don't buy it. It was made in Germany, buy it. And it was made in Germany. So it's been a, a good piano. Well, I called him and uh, he answered and he said, I'm at a piano tuners conference down in Anaheim. So, oh, I'm, t so, I'm sorry. He said, call, call me next week just as a reminder and we'll set a time to come out and work on it. So I called him today and uh, I said, so are you back? He said, I'm in the hospital <laughs> in Anaheim. He passed out in his hotel. He doesn't know who found him, what happened, but he kind of became aware of what was happening in the hospital, and he gave me permission. I've, I've talked to him before th about spiritual things, so I was grateful when I said, do you mind if I mention this for prayer tonight at our prayer meeting? And he said, oh, no, I, I'd be grateful and happy. So that's, a, that's good. So his name is Taylor McKinnon. Taylor McKinnon. So they did some tests. They're not finding anything, which is kind of a good thing, but they want to keep him a couple of days just to kind of make sure before he heads home. So Taylor McKinnon. So that's a good item. The second missionary that we are uh, highlighting uh, tonight um, are the Chitin. And um, when they were with us, they were just uh, weeks away from departure for South Africa. And they had been working for a number of years on deputation to raise support. And they were so excited to head out and get there. And as I read this, they're still excited to be there. And so they're, they're just, same month of July, we enjoyed the fellowship of, of a group of teens from a nearby sister church, and they talk about the teens and a few names there to be praying for. And then um, 
um, a, a, a church in the area, and I'm, I've lost track if that's the one they're assisting for a while while they're in language school, but um, they're looking for a building to purchase. What I appreciated was, was the statement, and this is a quote from um, that church, our hope is to find an existing building to purchase and to remodel if necessary. A second option is to purchase an empty plot of ground. Our impression from our search so far is that we need to add to the 72,000 the church has saved another 70,000. So um, they're just um, asking for prayer about these things. So that's from the Childs, South Africa. Okay, let's sing a couple more songs and we'll look at our study together. Number 149, you'll find, He giveth more grace. Let's sing this together. sing one more number 260 in your hymnal open for me let's stand as we sing this together
anyone with a Bible study guide. We want to make sure you have one. If we happen to miss you, don't think we did. Thank you. All right. Um, we're going to look at a key passage that's on your study guide there. Luke 12, 16 through 21. But I want to begin with James chapter 4 verses 13 to 15. And in your notes, I believe it says, um, let me get a copy of what you have. You know, notes it just says verse 14. But I'd like for us to look at um, verses 13 through 15. And the title of this is A Study in Bible Character, A Parabolic Fool. So what does parabolic mean? Well, the simple word is parable. And uh, they're, they're pretty much synonyms, except parabolic is used in a variety of other applications. So uh, we're going to look at a, at, a, at a situation, an incident, and we're going to look at a, at a parable. But before we do, to set the context for the primary passage, Let's, Let's look, look at James, James 4, 13, 13 through 15. Go to now, ye that say, today or tomorrow, we will, we will go, go into such a city and continue there a year and, and buy and, and sell and get gain. Whereas what you know you not what shall be on the morrow, morrow. for what, what is, is your life? life? It, it is, is even a vapor. vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then vanisheth away. For that you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. I had occasion recently to stop and uh, took, oh, 15, 20 minutes to wander through Mountainside Cemetery, which is out of Shoals, happened to be out that way. And in addition to some family buried there, there are at least, I, I try to think, I, I, I know of at least two folks who attended Westgate here, unrelated, um, who are buried out there. Uh, maybe, maybe more, but two I can think of right off hand. And as I, I, I was by myself, I, I hunted up a number of grave sites. But I was reminded of the brevity of life and how it seems those who lived, who lived in the past are sometimes seemingly somewhat forgotten. There were some names, the Wenlands, the uh, Wolfschweigels, the uh, just various, uh, various names that, that I had known as neighbors out in that area where my dad had talked about their name from time to time. And as I looked at their grave markers, looked at the years, of course, you're always amazed at how long ago it was, because time has just flown by. And uh, so, uh, you know, you, you, you look at the epitaphs when there are some. Sometimes it's just a word or two. Some of the older sections that have pedestal monuments, there's, there's uh, things written. And so it's interesting to kind of, as you read that, get a little bit of a glimpse of the kind of person that had lived, then died, and is now buried. I don't think that's morbid to do that. I think that's almost healthy a little bit, just to remind us of 
the brevity of life, but to remind us of those that we knew and loved and cared for, no one perfect, uh, and, and just stop and say, thank you, Lord, for the investments this person made, this person, that neighbor, this friend of my father's, uh, so on and so forth. And uh, uh, we're going we're gonna to come to this subject of the brevity of life in our passage. But um, let us not forget those who've gone before, and especially if they're still living. Uh, perhaps we ought to just remind ourselves to take time to um, thank the Lord and thank them if they're still living. Maybe a little more than we have been prone to because we get so busy it just kind of slips by. Um, so um, let's go to the, the main passage before us tonight and our, our context has us begin with uh, three verses right ahead of the main passage. We're going to look at verses 16 through 21. And so here's a Here's an incident uh, in which, as we read, um, see, see what you might glean as to what Jesus detected in this person. So I'm in Luke 12, verses 13 through 15. So one of the company said unto him, before we begin, who, who might that have been? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, Luke was it. Yeah, maybe it was Luke. Um, we don't know. You say, well, it was probably Peter. Well, he didn't say everything. Um, we just don't know. God chose to leave him in the name. But this, this fellow came and said, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. Yes, the longer I live, the more I become aware of how sometimes inheritances bring more grief than happiness. And uh, that can be hard. But it's interesting. Did this guy go to the right person? Well, you kind of know the rest of the story, and you're tempted to say no, <laughs> because cause Jesus kind of turned it away. But I think... Well, I won't think quite yet. So Jesus answered and he said, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? Now, could Jesus have solved every problem that existed on the face of the earth during his public ministry? Sure. But he chose not to. He had some primary purposes. He had compassion. He healed people. But he taught, he preached, he prepared for the next generation, for the next generation, right down, down through where you and I are today. But then he said to this um, one of the company, he said unto them, well, he's speaking to the company, but it started with his fellow. He said, take heed and beware of covetousness. Now let's stop there for a moment. Let's suppose this one who came was just interested. His motives were pure. He just wanted justice. Uh, he just wanted a fair division of things. Um, You say, well, I guess I can kind of see how he was concerned. But Jesus kind of took it even further. He said, beware of covetousness. Why? Because these things of ours, here, today, on tomorrow, one way or another. Um, and then he said, for man's life consisteth not in the abundance of things which he possesseth. 
period. So, I guess here's my thinking. Jesus must have detected some wrong motive in the man's heart who asked for help in dividing the inheritance. Any thoughts or comments on this? Okay. Yeah, I thought maybe whoever wrote the will maybe didn't just do it. Um, divided equally so many ways, or whatever. Um, just that uh, maybe he'd already kind of, but then put pressure on the other parts of the family to do differently. We, just, we don't know those details. What we do know is Jesus took that occasion to talk about what's in his word. So, so, with that, that background, background, let's, let's go, go. Uh, uh, to, to the, the parable. parable. And, and it's interesting, interesting when he begins the parable that he says, the ground of a certain rich man. And even though, and even though the Bible says he spake a parable, I wonder if he was thinking of an instance or if he was thinking of just generally how sometimes the wealthy in this case, husband and farmer, um, would react when a bumper crop comes along. I, I remember my father saying something along these lines, because bumper crops don't come along three or four, five, six, seven years in a row. If you get a bumper crop every fourth or fifth year, you're, you're, you're grateful. So, so it's kind of like, yeah, yeah. Um, let's, let's, let's be careful with the extra assets because we don't know what next year is going to be like. Not that you become stingy, but, but careful. Okay, so here's the, here's the account. Here's the man's situation, verse 16. Ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. What was his situation? Summarize it. All right. Yeah, it says he was wealthy, well-to-do already. But now he has a great bumper crop harvest. Okay, that's his situation. He was wealthy. His riches were increasing. Verse 17, he thought within himself, saying, who's the, who's the, who's the, who's the knower and discerner of all thoughts? God knows. In fact, Jesus was indicating that here. He thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. Farmers to this day, as they are able, sometimes here in the Willamette Valley of Oregon, there are crops, there are various grains. Barley, oats, wheat, often those are used for rotational purposes. Down in the valley, driving down I-5, you ever see that little sign that says, just rolling along? They're growing turf. They're growing, they're growing grass. My neighbor down the road just put in some whole lawn full of I was looking good, good looking stuff, grass, turf. But once in a while, a farmer will say, you know, the price right now is down. And, and there is a way, a little storage fee, but there is a way you can wait a year or two to sell your wheat, your grass seed, this, that, the other thing. And uh, in fact, I said to a cousin I was talking to recently, no one, I don't think you know, but down in the valley, Said, so is your dad still hanging on to some of his grass seed? Said, yeah, he, he watches things carefully. So maybe that's part of what this guy was doing. He was, he was realizing, uh, I think the price is going to go up. 
I'm going to hang on to it and sell it. Sometimes farmers hang on to it because they, they can't afford to sell it at the low price that it's at. And they're just praying it goes up. So, whatever the details of this were, he said, I have no room where to bestow my fruits. Must not have had neighbors he could rent a storage space from. We don't know more details than that. But his problem became what to do with the increase. So he started planning for that increase. And he says, uh, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And then verse number 19. I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thy knees, eat, drink, and be merry. What was he anticipating? Many years, long life. We talk, we use another term today. We call it retiring early because I can't. Now, now sometimes, sometimes retiring, retiring is forced upon you sometimes, sometimes uh, all, all kinds of valid reasons. Sometimes, sometimes it's health, sometimes, sometimes it's culture is just crashing down upon you where you are, and all, all kinds, kinds of, of reasons. reasons. But, but this guy, his reasons were, I've got goods laid up for many years. I can take my ease, eat, drink, and be merry. I can enjoy the good life. And, uh, boy, enjoying God's creation, time with family and friends, that's not all wrong. But this guy had eyesight for beyond the, the proper, the ordinary, the good. And here's, here's what happened unexpectedly to him. Bumper, news of the bumper crop comes in. He has a conversation with himself. He makes plans. I'm going I'm to increase, increase my, my storage areas and then I'm going to enjoy life. He can hire guards, he can hire storage keepers, whatever he needs to, he's got it all. But, but God said unto him, This night, in fact, God calls him a fool. Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? I think I mentioned this once before, but years ago I was, I was someplace back east where Pastor John Vaughn was sitting at my table. We were having lunch, a number of pastors, and uh, he, uh, he was in Greenville, South Carolina, and started the Hidden Treasures Christian School. Uh, was designed, designed just for special needs children. children. He had yeah, like 150 kids in his school. And, and people, people from, from across America, America uh, would hear about the ministry of the school. school. Some, some families, families would move there to have some Christian care and instruction given to their children. children. And uh, they... Uh, at a church, of course, he started the church, he planted the church, and they expanded and built and, and a nice facility. But the heart of the, the ministry underneath the church was this hidden treasure of Christian school. Well, the thing I'm about to tell you is I was sitting with him. And by the way, there was a, a, a fire that burned his daughter and wife severely. In fact, he was here. here. We, we had him here. here. I forgot his daughter. But there was, there was a, a book, book written. written. I forgot the name of the book. book. If we, we, we don't, don't have it in the bookstore, book we ought to get, get it again. I think the word gold is in it. But, but if, if you, you remember, remember, he and his daughter told their story. story. And my, my was it moving on how God gave grace and worked through that horrible situation. Well, years went by, like, like, like Pastor Pirate and 
and uh, Majesty Music. Ministry grew out of that. Well, the ministry grew out of his family. It's tragedy. But I remember him making the comment as he was viewing the fact that he was getting older, and uh, he said something like this. He said, you know, sometimes I wonder if the person that comes after me will keep this thing going the way God's given me the vision to get it started and going. I thought, oh, uh, it made me think. And uh, he, uh, he, uh, uh, more to this story for another time, but, but I, I, I thought, you know, there are some things we have to just leave. We do what we can. Prepare for the future. Some things we just have to leave for the Lord, to the Lord. I mean, we can ask ourselves, what if all my kids are going to turn out well? What if all my grandkids are going to turn out well? What if they're going to follow the Lord? Why? And, and we, we can worry ourselves to death. Let it take us to prayer. But there comes a time we have to say, Lord, I've done all I know to do here on this matter. Um, Lord, work. So, um, that's not what this man was doing in verse 20. <laughs> he was thinking about, uh, you know, life of ease. And God said, thou fool. Uh, then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. So death is inescapable. He thought he had many years left. Um, the reality is, his goods would be left to whomever at that point. He's not there to oversee it. He's not there to say anything more about it. He's not there to change his will if he, was, if he knew he was going to die that night. Um, I think there'd been a whole lot different train of thoughts, uh, even if he was unsaved. But God is drawing the heart to being rich toward God. Now, as we close, um, and prayer is so important, let me remind us again as we pray. Uh, uh, let us pray. It's easy sometimes to talk through the whole person. And I know, I know that there's reason for some of it. Sometimes you want an update. You've been faithfully praying in private, and you're, and you're saying to someone, "Tell me, how, how is it going?" Because I want to, I want to, want to pray with more knowledge. And so I understand that balance to it. But um, look at the look at the conclusion here. I've suggested uh, three quick things, and I don't have time to go to the third one. But understand, no one is guaranteed of tomorrow. No one. Our times are in God's hands. Now, don't go to bed tonight worrying about the fact you might not wake up. Say, well, if I don't go to sleep, then I'll surely be awake in the morning. You can't do that for, for very long. <laughs> you can't trick it. You know, like the guy that told me, he said, if, if I knew where I was going to die, I'd never go there. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Secondly, make sure priorities are eternally based. And thirdly, this is for your own study. The passage immediately following this in Luke talks about God's care God does care for us. That's a beautiful passage. There's a parallel passage in the Sermon on the Mount, passage in Matthew 5, um, 6, 7, right in there. But Luke 12, 22 to 40 talks about um, what God would, 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 would have us to learn in place of what the fool is thinking. Let's pray, pray together, together and then go to prayer. Lord, Lord thank, thank you for this passage. passage. Thank, thank you for the reminder that eternal values are what's important. Give us wisdom as we sort through what upcoming days should be like. And that's why, why we are taught in James 4, we ought to say, if the Lord will, 
will live and do this or that. And so, Lord, guide us and direct us in our planning, in our thinking, in our meditations. And then to rejoice that you will lead us and help us and guide us. We thank you, Lord, for the scriptures, for the quickening work of the Holy Spirit to our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray.